One of my favorite TIG cups for chromoly, stainless steel, ink and L is this one. It's a number 10 ceramic cup. It's called a Jazzy 10. And it's got a two layer diffuser in there that when you use this along with the gas lens collet body, it provides great shielding. It lets you have a really long stick out. We're going to be welding some coped steel tubing today with this cup and also showing some common TIG welding mistakes. I've got some coped tubing here that's roughly 120 thousandths thick. So the one amp per one thousandths rule sets me at 120 amps and I'm going to be pretty much full pedal. I'm going to be using 20 CFH, which is not a lot for a number 10 cup. That's another thing I like about this cup is it doesn't require any more gas than a number 8 typically, except when you really use a really, really long stick out, and we'll show that later. Having clean, bright metal, not just polished over mill scale, is very important TIG welding. Another thing we'll show in detail in just a little while. Right now I'm about a 5 8 long stick out at 20 CFH. Cup's working fine, but I'm a little shaky. Hopefully I'll get better as we go. I'm using 045 ER70S2 filler rod on this with a 332 electrode, 2% lanthanated electrode. I, I pretty much use 2% lanthanated for everything, both AC and DC. Just keeps my life simple. There are plenty of other choices that work good, but I've found that's, that's a really good all-around one for what I do. Now this shot really shows what a large argon envelope this 10 cup puts out. Right about along here you can start seeing where the heat tent stops and starts and it's just got a, a really big shielded area that's following along there. And that really helps as far as just giving you a little bit of leeway dipping your hot tip of your rod in and out of the argon and things like that. And of course it's going to help being able to use a really super long stick out on the tight angles there. So I'm going to extend it out to about three quarters of an inch here and pump the CFH up about five more to 25 CFH. And we'll go ahead and weld that inside there. That's not a very tight angle, but it does really show just how far you can extend the electrode out here with no problems whatsoever. Sometimes you can switch over to a really small diameter cup to get in tight angles, but then you generally lose some shielding. So I think it's better a lot of times just to go with a cup like this with a really long stick out. It gets you out of a jam sometimes. Coming up shortly, I'm going to show some of the biggest mistakes in TIG welding. But first, we'll take a quick look at just welding this other side. I should have let it cool off a little bit more. That's a skill that I'm not very good at, is being patient when it comes to finishing a job. And I rushed this one a little bit and didn't let it cool off from welding the other side. And you're going to be able to tell a little bit of difference when I'm finished. It's going to look not quite as silver and shiny. And that's basically because it was still good and hot when I welded this side. Incidentally, I mentioned earlier that I was using 045 diameter filler wire. This is one of those jobs where could have easily gone to 1 16th diameter. Both would have worked fine. I just noticed I'm feeding quite a bit of rod here. All right, let's take a look at some common TIG mistakes now. One of the most common is just not cleaning the metal. A lot of people that think they have a welding problem really just have a prep problem. You got to clean the mill scale off of hot rolled steel in order to get a good a good TIG weld, a good looking TIG weld. You can see all kinds of pits and things coming up in this thing. Actually a lot of times it'll be bubbling and spewing and sparking, but it doesn't look good. And most likely if I were to sand that off it'd be full of pits. Another thing and one of the most common things when you're learning to TIG weld is using too long an arc. Now here I'm going to start off with it with the machine set low enough that It'll, it'll carry a puddle if I hold a fairly tight arc, but won't very well if I lengthen the arc. And so right about now, I'm going to pull the arc and lengthen it. And look what happens. The puddle won't even move along with me. And now the filler rod just wants to blob and lay on the top. I tighten the arc length back up, and things get better again. When you contaminate your electrode, stop and clean it. Resharpen it. Because when you got a big blob of steel on there, 
That steel is vaporizing, the arc's wandering all over the place. It just makes for no fun, and it's hard to make a good looking weld with a dirty electrode. Once the electrode is cleaned up, things go really nice again. And that was with an 8 cup. Let me show you just a quick bead here with the Jazzy 10 on nice clean metal and about 20 CFH. Number 10 cup. Everything perfect conditions. The bead comes out almost silver. And with the same gas flow as I was using with the number 8, that extra dual layer diffuser is like secret sauce. Another area where it really comes in handy is TIG brazing with silicon bronze. This is some thin wall square tubing, but just like with soldering or brazing, the cleaner the metal the better. And also, what you're doing is you're shielding with argon instead of with flux. So having that little bit of extra argon that the 10 cup provides makes for a nice shiny TIG braze joint. This is a standard number 8 cup standard collet body that comes with most air-cooled 17 style torches. The most common torch out there that comes with say a 200 amp machine. This is sped up four times but I'm just showing you with a 7 16 stick out at 20 CFH results are less than perfect. It's gray, the puddles swam around on me, got oxidized. Same stick out, went to a stubby gas lens, number 8 cup, same gas, way way better. You can also stick a, a Jazzy 10 ceramic onto a stubby gas lens, same gas flow, same stick out, and get even better results. And that's why I almost always use a stubby gas lens setup with either an 8 cup or something larger like a Furic ceramic cup instead of the standard ones. Here's a little piece to help you know what style torch you have so you get the right stuff. This is a 17 air-cooled torch. It's one of the most common torches out there. Water-cooled 18s and 26 style torches use the same collet body and hardware. If this looks like your torch, you'll probably need this adapter kit. This is the cheapest way to make the Jazzy 10 work with that style torch. There are other ways also, and I'll show you that in just a second. One of the better deals to make that Jazzy work is get this Furic 8 combo kit. Then you'll also have a clear 8 and a ceramic 8 along with all the rest of the hardware to make everything work. And the Jazzy 10 will work with this kit also. And again, the reason is because you got basically two diffusers, two sets of diffusers there. And that just lets you use a crazy long stick out for those times when you need it. And it gives you a nice big blanket of argon, which is going to limit discoloration and also give you a little bit of forgiveness on dipping your rod in and out of the argon envelope. The clear cup here also works with the hardware with this uh, 8 combo kit. It just comes with a collet body with an o-ring groove on it. You can see both, both cups work on that particular collet body. If you have a number 9 or a 20 style torch that uses little small hardware like this that's only about 7 eighths of an inch long, this is a 45V44 part number. All you need is the Jazzy 10 and you're good to go. Screws right on just like a regular gas lens cup. Gives you way better shielding though.